Hi, this is Tim Hodges from the University of Cincinnati with another short video in field theory, this time about the Tower Fields theorem, which says that the extension degree is multiplicative in the following sense. So remember, if F is a subfield of E, then E is a vector space over F. So we define the degree of the extension, E over F, uh, to be the dimension of E as a vector space over this smaller subfield. And we denote it in this way, E colon F in square brackets. Then the uh, Tara field theorem says that if we have a, a chain of fields like this, uh, we have an intermediate field K between F and E, then we can define all of these different extension degrees and the extension the degree of the larger extension e over f is the product of the degrees of e over k and k over f so this is a very important result one that we use all the time in galois theory and it's also a great way for the student to get comfortable with proving results in field theory and abstract linear algebra so I encourage all my students to be sure that they know exactly how to prove this result. So let's have a look at how it's done. So let's suppose first that uh, E over K and K over F are finite. So E over K is equal to N for some integer and K over F is equal to M. That means we can find a basis E1 up to EN for E over the intermediate field K, and a basis F1 up to FM for K over the base field F. And we claim that the set of all possible products, FJ, EI, where I goes from one up to N and J goes from one up to M, form a basis for E over F. And of course, there are exactly n times m elements in this set. So that'll prove the result about multiplicativity. So remember, in order to prove that something's a basis, uh, we have to prove two things, that it spans uh, the vector space and that the set is linearly independent. So we do these two things in order as usual. So. First of all, let's show that it spans E over F. So let's take an arbitrary element H in e, the large field E. Okay, now we know that E1 up to EN is a basis for E over K. So we can write this element H as the sum of KI EI, where KI are elements in K. That's the definition of it being a bit of uh, the EI is being a basis for E over K. But now the Ks are in, the little KI are in this field K and the FJ are a basis for K over F. So that means that we can write each of these KI as a F linear combination of the FJs. In other words, we can write KI as the sum over J, AIJ, FJ for some AIJ in F. Now, so then we now substitute back this summation into this formula here, and we get that H is this double summation, which we can kind of rewrite in this more compact form as this H is the sum over all possible I and J of AIJ times FJEI. But of course, when we've written it like that, that's exactly the set the statement that H lies in the span of this set of FJEIs. And so that tells us because H was arbitrary that the FJEI span E over the base field F. So that proves the spanning part. Now let's look at the linear independence part. So to prove linear independence, we take an arbitrary linear F linear combination of these elements, FJ, EI. And suppose it's equal to zero, and then our job is to prove that all the AIJs are zero. So let's suppose that we have such a linear combination. The AIJs are in the field F, and we suppose that this linear combination is equal to zero. 
and we kind of reverse the procedure that we did above, we can kind of rewrite this double summation as the sum over i, the sum over j, a i, j, f, j, e i equals zero. Now, this, this middle summation here, the sum of a i, j, f, j, uh, the a's are in f, the f's are in k, so this whole thing lies in k. So what we have, thinking of this middle summation just as an element of k, we have a k linear combination of the ei's equal to zero. But the ei's are linearly independent over k. So the linear independence of the ei's over k implies that each of these things is equal to zero. So the sum over j, a i, j, f, j is equal to zero for all i. Now, we go back and use the linear independence of the f's over f. Remember this combination, the f's are in k and the a, i, j are in f. And so this is a linear combination of the f's that's equal to zero. But these things are linear and independent over f. So that means that each of these a, i, j's for j equals 1 up to m must be equal to zero, and this is true for all i, so that tells us that all of the a, i, j's are equal to zero, and that's exactly, we've proved that the f, i, the, I'm sorry, the f, j, e, i are linearly independent over f. So that's, so now we've proved that they span and that they're linearly independent, so this proves that the f, j, e, i form a basis for e over f, and so the degree of this extension is the number of elements in this basis, which is n times m. So we've proved the theorem in the case where these two things are finite. Let's end, let's wrap it up by looking at the case where one or both of them are infinite. Okay, so let's uh, suppose that um, e over f is finite, so E is a finite dimensional vector space. Then that certainly says that the degree of the extension K over F is finite because K is an F, sorry, an F vector subspace of E and E is a finite vector space, finite dimensional vector space of F. So we, we know by basic linear algebra that K is also a finite dimensional vector space. So that extension degree is finite. On the other hand, any basis for E over F clearly spans E over the larger field K. So again, if we have a finite spanning set for a vector space, then it must be finite dimensional. So this tells us that the degree of E over K is also finite. So if either of E over K or K over E, these either of these extension degrees is infinite, then the degree of E over F must also be infinite. So this proves the formula in that case too. So if either of these things is infinite, then the thing on the left-hand side is also infinite. So that proves the theorem, that's all there is to it. Let's have a quick look at an application. Let's suppose we wanna calculate the degree of the extension of the field generated by root two and i over q. And remember, if we have a cyclic extension like q root two, then the extension degree is the, uh, uh, the degree of the minimum polynomial of this element. So the degree of q over root, of q root two over q is the degree of the minimum polynomial of root two, which is just x squared minus two, that's irreducible, so this thing has degree two. So this has degree two. We could also use the intermediate field q root i, which again, i has minimum polynomial x squared plus one, so we know the degree of this extension is two as well. Uh, but uh, it turns out to be easier to use this tower here for the reason that we'll see in a minute, because finding the degrees of these extensions is a little harder because we have to find the minimum polynomial of say i 
over Q root two, which sometimes is more complicated than just finding it over Q. So, okay, so we know the degree of this extension is Q. Now we want to look at the degree of this extension. So what is that? Well, Q root two I is uh, the extension of Q root two by I. So what can this, uh, what can this degree be? Well, I sat, still satisfies x squared plus one. So all we need to know is, is this irreducible or is it reducible? What if it was reducible? I would be in Q root of two, but I is imaginary <clears throat> and Q root two is contained in the reals. So we know that I is not in here. So X squared plus one must again be irreducible over this larger field. And so the degree of this extension is also two. So now we can put all this together. The degree of the bigger field over Q is gonna be the product of this extension degree times this extension degree. They're both two, so the product is equal to four. So that's a very simple example of how we use this result. We use it many, many more times in Galois theory. And uh, I hope you now understand and can prove the result. Thanks very much for listening. And uh, please look at my other videos in Galois theory and keep listening for new ones. Thank you. Bye.